The 737 has two main landing gear and a single nose gear. Each gear has two wheels. The nose gear retracts forward into the wheel well. Because the wheels continue to turn, a snubber stops the wheels. The doors are mechanically linked to the gear. When the gear is down, the doors stay open. Doors attached to the main gear struts cover the wing and fuselage openings when the main gear are retracted. A rubber seal and an oversized hubcap on the outboard wheel complete the fairing. The landing gear lever is on the center instrument panel. The landing gear lever has three positions, down, off, and up. You must pull out the landing gear lever before you can move it. The landing gear limit speeds are on a placard below the landing gear lever. The landing gear indication lights are above the landing gear lever. The green gear indicator lights illuminate when the related gear is down and locked. A separate set of green gear indicator lights are on the aft overhead panel. These lights provide redundancy to indicate the landing gear are down and locked. The landing gear is down and locked when a minimum of one green landing gear indicator light for each gear is illuminated. The nose gear is down and locked because there is one green indicator illuminated. The 737 has multi-disc brakes on each main landing gear. The nose wheels do not have brakes. The captain's and the first officer's brake pedals supply control of the left and right brakes independently. The main gear have anti-skid protection to help maintain control when you apply brake pressure. Use the landing gear lever to retract the landing gear. The green lights extinguish and the red lights illuminate while the gear is in transit. When the main landing gear retracts, the system applies the wheel brakes. Hydraulic system A retracts the landing gear. When the landing gear are up and locked, the red indicator lights extinguish. There are mechanical up locks that hold the main gear in the up position. An over center lock link holds the nose gear up. Move the landing gear lever to off. Extend the landing gear. When you move the landing gear lever to the down position, the system releases the up locks and the gear starts to extend. The red indicator lights illuminate when the gear is not locked. When the landing gear are down and locked, the green gear indicator lights illuminate and the red lights extinguish. You steer the airplane on the ground with the rudder pedals and the nose steering wheel.
The rudder pedals turn the nose wheels a maximum of 7 degrees for use during taxi, takeoff, and landing. You use the rudder pedals to make small changes in direction. The nose steering wheel turns the nose wheels a maximum of 78 degrees. The nose steering wheel controls steering if you move the two controls at the same time. Hydraulic system A powers the nose wheel steering. After takeoff, if there is a failure of the number one engine, the hydraulic system A has only the electric motor driven hydraulic pump to supply pressure. The landing gear transfer unit uses hydraulic system B pressure to raise the landing gear. Extend the landing gear. If hydraulic system A pressure is not available to release the gear up locks, then you use the manual gear extension handles. There is one handle for each gear. The manual gear extension handles are on the cockpit floor on the left side of the first officer's seat. Before you use the manual gear extension handles, move the landing gear lever to off. Pull each handle out to release the up locks for the related gear. When the up locks release, the gear free fall into the down and locked position. After you pull the three manual gear extension handles, move the landing gear lever to down. If hydraulic system A is not available for nose wheel steering, then you can select an alternate source of hydraulic pressure for nose wheel steering. The nose wheel steering switch selects the hydraulic source for the nose wheel steering. The switch has a guard to keep the switch in the normal position. Select alternate nose wheel steering. Hydraulic system B supplies pressure to the nose wheel steering. The landing gear lever is locked in the down position when the airplane is on the ground. After takeoff, the air ground sensing system releases the lever lock. If the lock does not release, then you must cancel the lever lock. The override trigger unlocks the landing gear lever in all phases of flight. You must pull and hold the override trigger while you raise the landing gear lever. The red landing gear indicator lights normally illuminate when the gear is not locked in the up or down position. The red lights can also illuminate on the ground to show a gear sensor failure. The airplane cannot be dispatched in this condition. The brakes system has normal brakes and alternate brakes. Hydraulic system B supplies pressure for the normal brakes. Hydraulic system A supplies pressure for the alternate brakes. If there is a failure of the normal brakes, the system selects the alternate brakes.
A brake pressure accumulator is an emergency source if the other two hydraulic sources fail. Trapped pressure in the brake accumulator can provide several braking applications or parking brake application. The anti-skid system prevents a skid of the main gear when you apply brakes. The anti-skid system supplies protection from locked wheel, touchdown skid, and hydroplaning. When there is a wheel skid, the anti-skid system decreases brake pressure until the skid stops. The anti-skid system operates for the normal brakes and the alternate brakes. The anti-skid protection for normal brakes is applied to each wheel. The anti-skid protection for alternate brakes is applied to main gear wheel pairs. The anti-skid in-op light is on the center instrument panel. The anti-skid in-op light illuminates if a system malfunction occurs. The brake system has auto brakes for a rejected takeoff and for landing. The auto brakes are only available when the normal brake system operates. Let's look at the auto brake system during rejected takeoffs. You can only select RTO when on the ground before takeoff. Select RTO for takeoff. The auto brake disarm light illuminates for one or two seconds, then extinguishes to show that the system completed a self-test correctly. When the wheel speed is more than 90 knots and the thrust levers are moved to idle, the auto brake system supplies maximum brake pressure. The auto brake system supplies maximum brake pressure to stop the airplane during a rejected takeoff. After takeoff, you must disarm the auto brake system. Select off. You also use the auto brakes during landing. There are four deceleration rates available. Select auto brake setting three. The auto brake settings 1, 2, and 3 supply increased rates of deceleration during landing. To select maximum, you must pull the select switch out momentarily. Now select maximum auto brakes. The maximum setting is the highest auto brake setting for landing. Only manual braking can apply greater brake pressure. The auto brake system applies brake pressure after the airplane is on the ground and the forward thrust levers are at idle and the main wheels spin up. The auto brakes work together with the thrust reversers to supply the deceleration rate set by the auto brake select switch. The auto brake system decreases brake pressure as you apply thrust reverse thrust. The auto brakes stop the airplane fully 
unless disengaged by the pilot. You can use the manual brakes to disengage the auto brakes. The normal brakes use the source that supplies the higher brake pressure. If the manual brake pressure is more, then the auto brakes disengage. To disengage the auto brakes, you can push the brake pedals. You can move the forward thrust levers after touchdown. You can move the speed brake lever to the down detent. Or you can move the auto brake select switch to off. Now disengage the auto brakes with the speed brake lever. When the auto brakes disengage, the auto brake disarm light illuminates. To extinguish the auto brake disarm light, turn the auto brake select switch to off. You control the parking brake with the captain's or the first officer's brake pedals and the parking brake lever on the control stand. To set the parking brake, push and hold the brake pedals. Next, pull the parking brake lever until it locks in position. Release the brake pedals. The red parking brake warning light illuminates. The anti-skid system does not operate with the parking brake set. A fault in the parking brake system may cause the anti-skid in-off light to illuminate. To release the parking brake, push and hold the brake pedals until the parking brake lever releases. The parking brake releases and the warning light extinguishes. Hydraulic system B supplies pressure for the accumulator. When system A and B pressures are lost, the accumulator supplies hydraulic pressure to the brakes. There are two or three applications of brake pressure available through the normal brake lines. The anti-skid system is also available when you use accumulator pressure. The hydraulic brake pressure indicator is on the first officer's instrument panel. The normal brake accumulator pressure is 3000 psi. You can use the accumulator to set the parking brake and to apply wheel brakes. The auto brake disarm light has illuminated because there is a malfunction in the auto brake system. The auto brakes are not available. Set the auto brake select switch to off. When the auto brake select switch is moved to off, the auto brake disarm light extinguishes.